All right, here we go. How you doing? I'm Jeffrey Keith with the Aimless News. And here's today's first story. Mauston police officer charged with a felony after allegedly shooting another in the groin while drunk. There's the culprit right there, I believe, Officer Sturick. Yeah, I better blow this up so you can see it better. A Mauston police officer allegedly shot another person while drunk off duty. Well, that's, at least he was off duty. Leading to a felony charge and two misdemeanor charges. Sergeant Michael Stewart, 39 of Mauston, is charged with the felony second degree recklessly endangering safety misdemeanor and endangering safety by use of a dangerous weapon. Carries up to 10 years in prison or a $25,000 fine or both. Oh boy, this guy's in trouble. According to the complaint, Detective Ben Goring of the Juneau County Sheriff's Office called the Detective Clay Tester, you know, that was a useless sentence. Goring stated that he and Detective Sean Scowles responded to a call where Sergeant Stewart and another person were involved in an incident that ended with Stewart shooting the victim after a night of drinking at a bar. Guy had non-life threatening injuries. He underwent surgery to remove the bullet. The bullet went through the groin area. Ooh, and lodged into the victim's left thigh. Sturick, in an interview with police, stated he and the victim had been drinking and had about 12 beers throughout the night and into the morning. Uh, the cop could tell he was intoxicated by the way he spoke. While drinking, they began looking at guns. Always a great idea. Pound down about 12 beers and break out the guns, baby. The victim showed interest in the Walters P-22 pistol, which Stewart then removed from the safe. Here we go. Then they went into the backyard. <laughs> I wonder if he said, hold my beer. According to Stewart, he went to clear the gun and it went off. Shocking both Stewart and the victim, I bet especially the victim. Uh, they realized about the same time that he had shot him. <laughs> Stewart claimed to be a firearms instructor. Oh, that makes this even more funny. And said he did not know how the gun went off. I do. Stewart stated, here's the good part, that he did not have his booger picker on the bang switch, meaning he did not have his finger on the trigger. The old booger picker on the bang switch. Also, according to the firearms instructor, he was not that familiar with the Walters P-22 and had not even shot it that often since owning it. And he later searched a place and found some unspent rounds, so I guess the guy did try to clear it. All right, that's about it on that story. Uh, once again, moral of the story, always a good idea to pound about 12 beers and break the guns up, head into the backyard. What could happen? All right, let's check out our next story, shall we? Mom suffers mystery illness for days after swimming in a pond before a spider crawls out of her ear. The discovery led to a vomit-inducing hunt for eggs and legs the spider may have left behind. A mum who fell ill after swimming in a pond was shocked when a huge spider crawled out of her ear. Mirror, mirror journalist Ross Wynn Jones went wild swimming with her family and soon developed a mystery illness. Wow, that was a journalist for a magazine. 
She was left feeling nauseous and kept hearing a strange rustling sound in her ear following the holiday trip. Where'd she go swimming at? Oh, in a pond. Ross was left reeling after clutching her ear in terrible pain and a live spider crawled out. This led to a vomit-inducing hunt for eggs and legs. The spider may have left behind inside her ear. She wrote, I've had the misfortune to go to a casualty a few times in my life, but this was the first time I've ever heard of an A and E triage in her scream. I guess casualty is the name of the place she went. Uh, she said her trauma started when she went swimming while on holiday. All right, said that already. It didn't seem like a dangerous activity. I swam in Rwanda, survived the Sudanese and the Kosovo Wars, camped in the Australian bush, worked and traveled all over Africa and South America. Well, apparently you never swam in that pond before. <laughs> Afterwards, my ear was a bit clogged with water. The next day I felt really sick, which I put down to staying up late around the birthday campfire and drinking rum. That would make sense. But three days later, I still had nausea, nausea and my ear ached. All right. That also would make sense that it wasn't from the party. On Thursday, we went on a hilly car trip to Dartmoor, which altered the pressure in my ears. The result was almost indescribable. My ears started banging, crackling, whistling, and a feeling I can only describe as rustling. I stopped being able to communicate with anyone, let alone continually giving map directions. Well, who's... Who gave the directions after that? The nausea was horrendous. I got out of the car spinning, grabbing at my hair. At this point, I felt something emerging from it. I assumed at first it was wax. You thought wax was just emerging from your hair? But no, it was moving, and its legs were still kicking. It was a spider, and not a small spider, but a thick-bodied spider. <laughs> The nausea immediately lifted and I felt fine, except for being traumatized from a thick-bodied spider crawling out of my ear. Hours after the spider emerged, Russ began to feel ill and then was sent to casualty. I guess that's hospital. My ear is full of antibiotic drops, but I am, if I'm honest, still half, half expecting babies to emerge. The UK water spider can be found in any still water at any time of year, spinning a web beneath the water surface. Hmm. It collects air on the fine hairs on its body, then fills the web beneath the surface with an air pocket by scraping the bubbles off. They wait inside the air chamber for passing prey before rushing out to catch it. Man, those are sneaky little buggers. The British are... Arachnological Society says the spider is one that can and will bite people, and the bite is not unlike a bee sting. What a sneaky little bugger, just waits in that air pot, looking for an ear to crawl in. All right, let's move on to our next story, shall we? Interesting facts about swordfish. The swordfish is a really weird, interesting creature. Swordfish, I'm not trying that one, also known as broadbills, are large, highly migratory, predatory fish characterized by a long, flat bill. They live in warm, temperate oceans around the world. They are typically found from near the surface to a bit depth of about 1,800 feet. All right, well, that's quite a range. The lifespan is about nine years. These amazing creatures with their sword-like bills are very popular game fish among anglers. They have very high stamina when compared to other game fish. They commonly reach about nine feet in length. Uh, the maximum was about 15 feet and 1,400 pounds. Ooh. 1,100 was his record. The swordfish an elongated scaleless fish has a tall dorsal fin and a long sword used in slashing at prey. It extends from his snout. The sword is flat rather than rounded as in marlins and other spear-nosed fishes and has thus given rise to the name broadbill. 
swordfish is also distinguished by its lack of pelvic fins and of teeth. No teeth. Hmm. They are built for speed. All right. 60 miles an hour. Make them among the fastest fish in the ocean. While swordfish are cold-blooded animals, they have special organs next to their eyes to heat their eyes and also their brain. <laughs> the heating of the eyes greatly improves their vision. Maybe I need that. Contrary to belief, the sword is not used to spear, but instead may be used to slash at its prey, to injure the prey animal, making it easier to catch. It may be used to slash. I think he uses it to spear those things. Swordfish are carnivores and eat a wide range of fish. Swordfish eat daily, most often at night. They're a highly migratory species, moving toward colder regions to feed during the summer. So their eyes don't get overheated, I guess, when they get those heaters on. Swordfish are not schooling fish. They like to be alone because those damn swords would be getting in the way. Reproduction occurs by spawning. I wonder how those swords work on that situation. What? Female swordfish can lay anywhere between 1 million and 30 million eggs at once? Oh, son. They start out as extremely tiny larvae. Swordfish grow rapidly. In the course of their lives, they may increase their body weight by at least 1 million times. I don't guess. Fully adult swordfish have few natural predators, except for us fishermen. In addition to the role of the marine food chain, swordfish are well known for recreational fishing and cuisine. See? Swordfish are harvested by a variety of methods. Uh, it's called sword fishing. Hmm. Swordfish makes for a hearty meal. Usually sold as steaks. All right. The swordfish has been used by astronomers as another name for a constellation of Dorado. That was outstanding and fascinating. And that's going to do it for this episode of the Aimless News. If you like this content, give us a like. If you like our channel, consider subscribing. But the best way for you to help us promote this channel is to share this video far and wide because remember the aimless news must be told. <laughs>